If you've decided that you want to sell on Etsy, you either have this awesome product that you make and your friends and family have told you you should definitely sell it, or you're looking for a side hustle so you can make some extra money. You've heard that you can sell on Etsy, you found a product that you can sell so you can make some extra cash. Either way, you put your blood, sweat, time, and tears into creating the perfect Etsy shop. You hit publish, and now you start waiting for sales to come in. Hey guys, if you're an Etsy seller, I'm sure you can relate. That time waiting after you hit publish can be a little frustrating. In this video, we're going to talk about five mistakes that Etsy sellers make and how you can correct those mistakes and start seeing more sales. Mistake number one is quitting too soon. As Etsy sellers, we're really excited about our creations. We've put in all of the hard work to create the product and doing all of the things that you have to do to get your products posted on Etsy and ready to sell. It can be quite discouraging to get a listing up and published and then get crickets. Etsy, like most platforms, has an algorithm. Depending on how competitive the landscape is for the product that you're selling, it may take time for your product to rank in the Etsy search algorithm. There are a lot of things that come into play, like keywords in your titles and your tags, your listing photos, your processing time, favorites, reviews, and the actual popularity of the product that you're selling. But even if you do everything right, you might not start getting sales immediately. It's important that you have patience and realize that you might have to try many different techniques in order to get your listing seen by your target customers. Decide on a strategy, watch your listings and your analytics. You might even try having two separate listings for the same product using different strategies. And by this I mean you might have two separate listings with different titles and tags or even different listing photos. The goal here is to try different things so you can see what works best. The key takeaway here is not to quit. It can be really frustrating not making sales, but keep pushing. You never know when you're about to make a breakthrough. Mistake number two is not using quality pictures in your Etsy listings. I don't want to make selling on Etsy sound complicated, but there are a lot of things that you need to focus on beyond making a quality product, and your listing photos is one of those things. Etsy buyers want to see what they're purchasing. Your first photo in your listing photos is what shows up in the Etsy search results. That photo is a major factor that a buyer will use to even decide if they're going to click on your listing and view the details. A good thing to do when you're posting a new Etsy listing is to check out your competitors. Do an Etsy search for the listing that you're selling and look for best sellers. Take a look at their photos. Look at the angles that they're using and the types of photos that they're taking and use that as inspiration. Next, you want to make sure that you're taking good quality pictures and use the size requirements that Etsy recommends. I believe the recommended picture size is 2000 by 2000 pixels and you don't need a professional camera to take good quality pictures. Most smartphones these days will give you excellent pictures so you can just use what you have. You can use a program like Canva for free to edit your pictures and get them to the proper size for your Etsy listings. Etsy also gives you tips that are right to the left of where you load your pictures in your Etsy listing. Etsy tells you to use natural light and no flash, to include a common object for scale, show the item being held, worn, or used, to shoot against a clean, simple background, and add photos to your variations so buyers can see all of their options. Etsy gives you space for 10 photos. I do recommend that you use all 10 if you can. You can also add a video. I recommend adding anything that you can to give that buyer the extra push to see that your product is the product that they want to buy. Mistake number three is not using keywords in your title. This mistake is super common 
And it's a mistake that almost every Etsy seller has made when they've started selling on Etsy. When you're new to selling on Etsy, you might be tempted to make your titles creative, especially if you're an artist. And most of us selling on Etsy are the creative type. So you can see why this mistake is so common. Let's say you're an artist and you've created an original watercolor artwork that you call Starry Night. What you might be tempted to do is use Starry Night as the title for your Etsy listing. And this would be a big mistake. Let me explain how keywords work and then it's going to become really clear why this is a mistake. Keywords are words or phrases that describe what you're selling. More specifically, they are the words that a buyer would use in the Etsy search to find the products that they're looking for. For example, if I went to Etsy to look for some joggers that could be customized for my wedding or for my daughter's dance team, I would do a search on Etsy for custom joggers. Custom joggers would be the keyword phrase. If I'm the seller that's selling custom joggers, then I would need to add the keyword phrase custom joggers in the title of my listing. When creating your Etsy listings, you want to put as many keywords as you can in the title while still making the title readable. This will give you a better chance for showing up in the Etsy search results when someone is searching for the product that you sell. Here you can see a listing for custom joggers that I have in my shop. Notice the keywords that I've used in my title. Custom sweatpants, bride jogger, gift for bride, bride gift, bridal shower gift. These are all words and phrases that a person might use if they're looking for the types of joggers or sweatpants that I sell. You'll also notice that I use both the words joggers and sweatpants because people use those words interchangeably. And I want my listing to pop up whether they enter the word joggers or if they enter the word sweatpants. You'll also notice that I targeted a specific group in my listing. I targeted brides or people that are buying gifts for weddings because I did some research and I noticed that a lot of brides or people shopping for weddings do that shopping on Etsy. Let's go back to our original Starry Night painting example. What are the odds that a person is going to come to Etsy and search for Starry Night if they're looking for some original artwork for their home or their business? And if they did, their search intent might be geared towards the well-known Starry Night piece of artwork, something related to that. But they might not be looking for an original piece of artwork um, that's named Starry Night. What they might do to find a custom piece of artwork for their home is search for things like custom painting, night theme painting, dark theme painting, purple and black custom artwork. It would be better to give your listing a title like Starry Night, Customizable Watercolor Paint, Galaxy Print, Night Sky, Celestial Sky, Nature Painting, landscape painting, trees, and stars. If you have a listing that's not getting a lot of views, a good place to start is your title. Make sure your title has keywords in it that a person would use in the Etsy search to find what you're selling. Very similar to mistake number three is mistake number four, which is not using tags or the correct tags. When creating your Etsy listings, Etsy gives you the option to add tags. Etsy has this as optional, which might make it tempting not to use them. Etsy gives you a little guidance and describe tags as what words might someone use to search for your listings. Use all 13 tags to get found. This is a very big hint. The Etsy algorithm uses tags or keywords to deliver the proper search results to their customers. Remember, it's Etsy's goal to help their customers find what they're looking for out of the millions of shops on Etsy. Your goal is to be found in the Etsy search results when someone searches for what you sell. This makes using tags very important. You can approach tags in the same way you approach putting the proper keywords in your title. You want to use words or phrases that someone would use if they were searching for your item. Etsy gives you 13 tags 
and you're limited to 20 characters per tag. You can use multiple words in a tag as long as you don't exceed 20 characters. Here's where it gets a little tricky. The keywords that you use in your title and your tags don't have to match exactly, but you can have some overlap. Not duplicating keywords in your title and your tags gives you the opportunity to use more keywords in your listings. However, the really important keywords are okay to repeat in your title and your tags. And these are going to be keywords that is virtually impossible not to use when you're describing your items. For more details about optimizing your SE listings, I recommend you watching this video that I have linked above me in the cards. I'm not sure that everyone is going to agree with me on this one, but mistake number five is not researching what sells on Etsy. In every niche, there are products that sell and those that don't. If buyers are not coming to Etsy to find the product that you're selling, then you're not going to make many sales. Some might argue that you can do marketing and bring customers to Etsy to buy your products. But I would counter with, if you're going to do that level of marketing, then why sell on Etsy? You could have your own website and bring your customers directly to your own website and not share your profits with Etsy. The benefit of selling on Etsy is that it is a marketplace and Etsy brings customers to you. So let's talk about researching what sells on Etsy. And we can use my Etsy shop where I sell SVG files as an example. I want to sell SVG files or PNG files that other crafters can use to create their items. Instead of randomly picking images that I like, what I should do is go on Etsy and research what Etsy buyers are coming to Etsy to purchase. I can use Etsy to do my research or I can use paid tools like eRank or Everbee. I can do a separate video on using the paid tools, so for this video, I'm going to focus on just using Etsy. Let's hop over to my laptop. For this example, let's say I wanted to do an SVG file for a gender reveal that someone could use to make gender reveal t-shirts, for example. So let's go in and do a search. Gender reveal um, SVG because that's exactly what I might make. So now I can look through and see what is actually selling for this keyword phrase. And what I would do is just go through and look. And when I do my searches, I'm basically looking for bestsellers. So I see that there's a bestseller here and it's pretty simple, pink or blue, mommy loves you. Nothing really proprietary. It's, I can, I know that I could make this pretty easily. So I'm going to take a look at this listing and just kind of see, you know, make sure it is a bestseller. I might look at what it's being priced for. And then I might even look down into their reviews so I can see what people liked about it. And this person says they used the PNG portion and it came out perfect and that they were a beginner a beginner at sublimating so that's good easy to use i see someone made shirts they came out good more people made shirts they came out great so this might be something that i might want to design now i would definitely not design the image exactly like this one but i know that people will buy gender reveal shirts now that reference pink and blue um, because it's a gender reveal and they don't know the sex of the baby so let's go back to the search results and I'm going to look more and see if I can find more bestsellers. And we'll just keep going down. Let's see if we can find another. And I know this one doesn't say bestseller. But I also see that this is a bundle, so I might click through and look at this. And you notice it's the same pink and blue theme. It's actually the same phrase, just different fonts and still has the cute little baby feet. But this is a bundle. Now, what I might do with that information is think about the first listing that I saw, which I don't think was a bundle. 
and think of creating a bundle, which would make my listing a little bit more enticing to a crafter or a buyer than this listing. So I would keep that in mind. And then I'm just gonna keep going and see what I mean here. Here's the pink and blue, mommy, daddy, sister, brother, it's a bundle. And look at that, it is a bestseller. So I would definitely take note of that. So I could, and it's $1.99, and that other listing was, I believe, $3 or so, and it was just one. So I might go the bundle route. But basically, all I'm doing here is just researching what people like. Um, and look at this one, Keeper of the Gender. That's pretty cool. And you can see people are liking this one. And this is just a, this is a PNG and a JPEG file. So I could create something similar. Again, not copying it. We do not want to copy people's designs. But may do something where, so in this design, if it's just a PNG and a JPEG file that um, there's not a cut file, so I could create something a little different and make it an actual cut file for those that are using crickets or silhouette machines. So I might keep that in mind. So basically all I'm doing is looking for what people want to purchase in reference to the idea that I have. And you can pretty much do this in any niche for any pro product. You're just trying to find and make sure that people are actually coming to Etsy to buy what you're selling. Now you know some of the common mistakes that most Etsy sellers make, myself included. And I've shown you how to fix those mistakes so you can start increasing your Etsy sales. Have you made any of these mistakes? Are there any mistakes that you've made that you think should be on the list? Let's talk about it in the comments. I'm pretty sure your mistakes and your experiences can help a lot of Etsy sellers to not make those same mistakes and we can all help each other out. I'll even add another mistake that I made in the comments. So check that out so you definitely don't go down that road. And now that we've covered what not to do, watch this video right here because it's going to give you more Etsy seller tips to increase your sales.